Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's Straight Outta Boston here, and today we're back for episode number 43 of my Atlanta Braves franchise here on MLB 15, the show. Today we're ready to kick off the 2018 World Series, take a look at the pitching rotations going to line up. We're starting with Julio Tehran once again, and uh, going with Fulton Avich, Martin, and then Shelby Miller in the four spots. Here, take a look at the Red Sox lineup. This is the team we're going to be facing off against in the uh, World Series here, and you can see it uh, looks like the names like Pablo Sandoval and Hanley Ramirez, those guys have more or less worked out for Boston so far as we're ready to see. It's Jordan Zimmerman. He is their new ace. He is going to get the win in game one, but we even the series back up in game two. Game three is a loss, but game four is a win. So once again, we're knotted up at two, headed for a game five. And once again, I'm going to be doing the same thing I did last series, playing games five, six, and seven. This time, games five and six are going to be uh, compacted into one episode. And then if necessary, I'm not spoiling it, but if necessary, game seven will be the next episode. But we'll see. It depends. If either team wins both of these games, there will be no game seven. Take a look at the series recap. It's going to be Kyle Crick against Julio Tehran. Now, you might have wondering, how did Kyle Crick end up on the Red Sox? He actually got traded for Mookie Betts after season one, I think maybe in the middle of season two so they got Rusni Castillo in center field and uh, here is Hanley Ramirez this is not the Hanley Ramirez many of you probably think of when you think of Hanley Ramirez now especially you Red Sox fans he's actually still one of the most feared hitters in baseball in this game and really can be that in real life when he's healthy but in this save especially we're, he's going to be someone to, uh, to to fear so we're going to keep an eye on that matchup here is Todd Frazier up a two men on in the first he goes down swinging on the strikeout so Kyle Crick gets out of the jam we are through one scoreless here it's zip zip into the top of the second Dustin Pedroia he was betting fifth for the Red Sox tonight a little bit of a weird lineup spot for him but check out Benito Rodriguez into the hole and one second baseman robs another usually it's Pedroia doing most of the robbing but this time it's Rodriguez with the nice play now it's Aaron Brown at the dish 0-2 count he goes down to the changeup Tehran was dialed in from the first pitch tonight. He had a phenomenal performance, you guys will see. It's Crick up, Frazier up actually with two men on again, and he strikes out again, so Frazier coming up empty. He's left four men on base already. Crick is through three under the top of the fourth. It's Hanley Ramirez up already 1K tonight. He's behind in the count 0-2, and he goes down to the curveball, frozen right there, his second K of the day. He entered tonight batting one for 16 in the World Series so far. Make that one for 18. Here's Jared Sultan Lamakia back on the Red Sox. He is uh, back. I don't really know why. Considering that Blake Swihart, he's playing first base. I really kind of can't believe they can't find a better first baseman than effectively what Jared Saltalamaki is because Swihart could catch. But Swihart grounds into the 5-4-3 double play there. We are still scoreless here. Into the bottom of the fifth, it's Julio Tehran up 3-2 count. And Tehran is going to walk, actually. On uh, that, that was a full count, so that must have been like a 7 or 8 pitch AB. But it's D Gordon up next, 0-2 count. He actually gets nicked on the foot here, so two men on. Or I should say two men are going to get on here for the Atlanta Braves. It's Benito Rodriguez. He would walk, so the bases are loaded now with no one out in the ending. A great opportunity here for the Braves. It's Freddie Freeman's turn first. He's going to pop this one up. Will this one stay in play? It's Salta Lamacchia. He gets that one. So it's one down in the ending now after Jorge Soler would be retired. It's Frazier up, and Frazier is going to leave three more men on base. Seven left on base in his first three plate appearances tonight. That is really horrible. But here we go now, top six, still scoreless. It's Bogarts up. He goes down on the slider. So Teheran continues to deal here. Bottom six now. He's up with a man on, but he's going to strike out. It was the 102nd pitch for Crick there, but he would remain in the game, as you will see later. It's Hanley Ramirez up third plate appearance tonight, and once again, he strikes out. He has not even seen a ball. He is striking out on 3 2 count so far, but Crick still in the game, and he would actually get through the seventh, 110 pitches. He was really impressive tonight, as he would uh, go seven scoreless here. Top eight, still a 0-0 game. It's Swihart up 0-2 count. Swihart goes down on the fastball. Tehran still dealing here well into the eighth inning. Now it's Cole Calhoun with a man on Calhoun drives one deep left center has he got another one yes he does Cole Calhoun unbelievable what a boom I mean honestly how many go-ahead home runs is this guy how many go-ahead hits I it is unbelievable it seems like whenever Cole Calhoun is up at the plate in a late game scenario where we need a run he always comes through it is incredible and Tehran is going to come up now and he is actually going to get this one by Hanley Ramirez. He could not make the play. So not only Ramirez, uh, not only is Ramirez struggling at the dish, but he is struggling out in the field as well, providing uh, pretty much negative value for the Red Sox at this point. Now it is top nine. Ramirez at the dish, and he goes down. Fourth K of the night. It's the Golden Sombrero, and Tehran closes the deal with a complete game shutout. And the Braves win two to nothing. Actually, three to nothing after uh, that second or the third run came home. 
on the Ramirez error. So, Terry Rod, complete game shutout, nine innings. I think he had ten strikeouts. We'll see the final line, though. Yes, ten strikeouts, only four hits, no walks. Completely shut down the Red Sox. I don't even think they had any extra base hits here tonight. And there he is, the player of the game, Julio Tehran, the ace of the staff, who gives the Braves a 3-2 to series lead there in the driver's seat now. Just 27 outs from a World Series championship. It's going to be Jordan Zimmerman against Mike Fultynavich here in a game number six from Fenway Park. Zimmerman, the new ace in town for the Red Sox. He is going to be trying to back out there for game six on six days, or uh, five days rest, I should say. And it's going to be Fultynavich, the man who's closed out uh, each of the previous two series. He got the winning game five against uh, Washington, and then he got the winning game seven against the Cubs. He's going to try and do it again here tonight against the Boston Red Sox. It's D. Gordon on first. He's stealing second. That throws into center field. Gordon now booking for third. The throw! Not in time, and Gordon's in a third base with no one out here in the first. A great scoring opportunity here early on for the Braves. But Zimmerman is ahead in the count, 0-2 on Rodriguez, and Rodriguez strikes out, swinging on the fastball, one down. Now it's Freddie Freeman up, 1-1 count, and he's going to line one right at the second baseman. Pedroia makes the play. The runner will not advance. Now two down in the inning for Jorge Soler. Actually, it be for Todd Frazier hitting fourth here tonight. And Frazier leaves another man on base. He strikes out. He was actually having a good playoffs. I think he was hitting over 300 in the playoffs, but I, I can't seem to hit anything with the guy. We'll see, though. Anyway, it's Rustin Castillo up now. Castillo's going to rip one. Left field. This one is off the monster there, played by Calhoun. He'll get it in quickly, but Castillo is going to pull into second easily with a leadoff double. So the new leadoff man for the Red Sox is getting it done. It's Bogarts up. He goes down 100 miles an hour on the fastball there from Fulte Davich. Now that is going to make it one down in the inning. It's Pablo Sandoval up next. Sandoval, deep fly to right field. Soler is backtracking. This should be plenty deep enough. And Soler makes the play. Here comes the runner. The throw will go to the cutoff man. But Castillo will come across and score easily as that will make it a one to nothing lead for the Red Sox now. It's Pedroia up, and he goes down to the changeup. Filthy stuff from Fultinavich's second K of the inning. And he is through the first. It's a one to nothing lead for the Red Sox. It's Bogarts up bottom three. He goes down once again his second K of the day, this time on the knuckle curve. And Fultinavich is dialing in now. He is settled in. It's Frazier, another run scoring opportunity. And this time he's actually going to come through, even though it wasn't really that great of a hit. Uh, and actually goes down as an error as that throw is going to go over Yoan Moncada playing first base there. But Rodriguez was uh, breaking for home on contact there. He was on third with less than two outs, and he gets home safely. So it would have been an RBI anyway. Now it's a 1 1 game, bottom five. Moncada up, deep right field. This one, without a doubt, is gone into the right field bleachers there. One of the deepest parts of the ballpark. Uh, Fenway has a really unique right field. It's, it's shallow at the pole, but actually as you get deeper into that corner there, it is one of the deepest right fields in baseball. So you, it takes a lot to hit home run to a spot like that in the field. But Mankata does just that. Here's Frazier up. I said I couldn't hit anything with him earlier in the episode. Well, here he's going to have extra bases. The throw is going to go to third, and Freeman is in there. So second and third with no one out here in the inning. Now the bases are loaded with one out. It's Calhoun, and he gets hit. So although he really didn't cause it, Calhoun comes through clutch again, ties the game up with the hit by pitch. We're not at that but two once again, and that would do it for the starting pitcher, Jordan Zimmerman. It's going to be Addison Reed on now. He's going to face Jung Ho Gong, a man that was on the bench most of this playoff run. First pitch, deep right center. This one's got a chance. It's gone. A grand slam for Jung Ho Gong, and the Braves lead it 6-2. to two. Unbelievable. A man who was benched for a majority of this playoff run, hitting under 200 entering this game. He was only in there because of the DH. Allowing Rodriguez to DH. We move Gong back to shortstop. Gordon back to second. And he comes through. It's a grand slam. And the Braves have opened up a four-run lead. Unbelievable stuff. Now it's on to Fulte Navich. His night will be done after six innings. He only threw 74 pitches because he wasn't fully rested for the start. He had four days of rest, but his energy wasn't all the way back up uh, to its uh, full capacity. So his day would be done after six. He struck out nine. Two earned runs on six hits. And then Soler is going to add on an insurance run with an RBI base knock here in the 7th. 7-2 game now. Braves on top. It is Matt Weisler on in the 7th. We would go 7-8-9 with our crop of bullpen arms that have been so effective so far in this postseason. postseason. Weasler got through the seventh. Now we're on to the top of the eighth. It's John Jaso up with a man on. Jaso's going to rip one right center field. That's going to get down. and It'll go all the way to the wall. One run is going to come around. Here comes the relay, the throw home. Not in time. It was Gong scoring his second run of the afternoon or the evening, I should say. And Jaso's into third. He would not come home and score. But it's Lucas Sims now on for the eighth. It's Ramirez up, who actually got his second hit of the World Series here tonight. But he couldn't pick up his third, at least not in this at-bat. That is going to retire the side here in the 
the eighth, so we're on to the ninth. It's Andrew Miller, one down. Jared Saltz, Lamakia up, strike three, swinging, two down, one out away. The Braves are from their first World Series title in over 20 years. Here it is, the 0-2, struck him out. And it's been a long climb, but the Atlanta Braves are back on top. They've won the World Series. The 2018 Atlanta Braves are world champions. They have returned to the peak of baseball for the first time since the mid-90s. And there it is. Our goal is finally complete. We have won a World Series. It's unfortunate that we didn't get to do it in Philadelphia. That is where I originally dreamed of doing it at the start of this franchise. But it just didn't work out that way. It's sort of how life goes. And it added a little bit of an interesting sort of twist to the series, something that... You know, we hadn't really ever seen before in a franchise series, at least not that, at least not one that I've done. And uh, it was kind of a unique twist, and it worked out. All in all, we won our World Series in our first year with our new team. Take a look at Jorge Soler. This was a hilarious celebration. He's going to do the running man here with the high, the high knees. And then Bochi celebrating. He gets his fourth World Series title as a manager. Unbelievable stuff. He is no doubt going to the Hall of Fame after this. And here it is. The Braves are your 2018 World Series champions. They celebrate it in the city where their organization first originated. The Boston Red Stockings turned into the Boston Braves, moved to Milwaukee, who then moved to Atlanta. So there it is. The Braves have won the World Series. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And I'm out. Peace.